So, eliciting health state preferences. Whatever health state descriptive system we use, the next step is to get some scores, some numbers attaching to the different health states. Uh, there are a range of methods available, but far and away the most widely used is something called the time trade-off method. And in the time trade-off, this is an illustration for a chronic health state, the approach for temporary health state is slightly different, but let's focus on this. An individual is offered two alternatives. In the first alternative, they're going to live for some period of years, T years, usually 10 is used. Live for 10 years, and then they're going to die. In the second alternative, the individual is going to live for some number X years in full health, and then they're going to die. And so the individual respondent is asked to choose between these two alternatives. But it's not just a case of choosing one alternative over the other. They're, what the elicitation process is trying to do is find out what value of X, what period of time in, the, in full health, would leave the respondent balanced between having 10 years of ill health or a shorter time of full health. And there's different ways of asking the question, but essentially you're trying to get to that point where um, the individual says, I really can't choose. They're the same for me. This shorter period in full health is the same to me as is as attractive or unattractive as this 10 year period in um, the ill health state. And so the score that's then attached to the ill health state is X over T. And we'll see why that is in a minute. So essentially, you're asking the individual, what's the maximum number of years of life you would be willing to give up in order to enjoy full health rather than your current ill health? Because that question identifies the T minus X, then you can get the X. Please. You do that in a real interview, yes. right? face to face. Um, most, most of the initial studies were done by interview face to face. Latterly, uh, using computers, uh, you're essentially being interviewed by the computer. Right, and then when you do that, and when you say you vary X, how in concrete terms do you do that? You, do, you ask, for example, yeah. you start with five years, and yeah. then you take a... Uh, quite, quite a common approach is what's been called a ping pong approach, where you offer a, a, a sort of quite a high value of X to, um, to, to start with, and if the individual um, rejects that or, or says, well, that's, that's better than, than uh, or accepts it, it's much better than the 10 years of ill health, you then offer them a lower value. And then they quite possibly reject the lower value. So you offer them a somewhat higher, and the ping pong is the back and forward. Yeah, but then uh, the, uh, I suppose that the respondent's response would be different depending on which value you start with. Um, yes, um, there's some evidence of that, starting point bias. And uh, I think with all these things, there's no, there's no perfect way to, to ask the question. Um, if you are concerned about starting point bias, you can, of course, then ultimately model the responses and put in as a covariate what your starting point was. So you can then standardize to control for it. We're doing this not for an individual's health choices, but to gather data about thousands of people in Oxfordshire or in some location to yeah. get a, a policy base, Yeah. right? Yeah, so it's for, typically for the individual, it's a hypothetical health state. The individual's not actually in this health state. They're, they're given a description, such as our 21112 health state. They're asked to consider what it would be like to be in that health state for the next 10 years. Sure, but then yeah. if you ask the same way to 1,000 people, that would bias only those 1,000 people. 
you have to vary those ways of asking across those thousand people, then I would say that the starting point bias would not operate. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as I say, you could, if, if you vary the starting point, you could then control for it. Yeah, right, but, exactly. it but if you just start somewhere and don't vary it, you, you've no idea the extent of it. Yes, yeah. so that my question is, do people do that? Um, there's been quite a wide range of different approaches. I couldn't characterize them all. Um, as we'll see, there's been about, it's been done in about 25 countries and the design has varied in different ways over time in different countries. So um, there will be some that have and some that definitely haven't. Sorry for that, because mm -hmm. what you described there is something I can read in books, but I, I'd like to ask you yeah, a yeah, yeah. specific question sure, that sure. I can only ask. No, that, that's that's, that's and, absolutely and, and, fine. And so let's say, so when you interview someone and you want to get the responses, you say that let's suppose you are fine with all those five domains except for mobility where you have some problems in walking about. Yeah. And let's assume you are going to live with this problem in the mobility, some problem in the mobility for 10 years. And would you like to trade that life for a life in live in full health for five years? And then he says, oh, no, I would like to certainly live in for 10 years with some problem in yeah. mobility. Mm -hmm. Then you would say, how about, let's say, 7.5 years yes. or whatever. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's, and, that's what you do. you want to go a little bit too far, then how about living for nine years in full mobility yeah. in exchange for, uh, with some problem in mobility for 10 years? Oh, well, then I would like to exactly. say I would prefer nine years old in full health. And then you go back to, let's say, how about then eight years that's or seven years? Exactly what happens, yes. Okay, okay fine. Yeah. And hence the ping pong description here back and forward. Now, of course, that approach, which is really intuitively reasonable, has problems. Starting point bias, one issue. Also, if you don't start near the answer, it could be quite a long process. And so there's more opportunity for individuals to get fatigued or bored and disinterested. So there's, there's, there's issues definitely around this. And then you also say that there are so many combinations of health status. Yeah. And so you, in this case, I only asked the person to suppose that you have one problem, yeah. uh, one problem area where you have moderate difficulty. But there are some uh, how can I say, combinations where you have some problem in mobility, no problem in self-care, but severe problem in usual activities and severe problem yeah. in anxiety and depression. And then let's suppose you're going to live in that uh, mm. status for 10 years. Yeah. And would you like to trade off that 10 years yeah. for living in full health, say, for five years or something like mm -hmm. that? Is that how you proceed? Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's going to be a little bit, you, you, you demand a lot of imagination for people. You definitely, to imagine. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the alternative, of course, is you go to experts who are experts in imagination, or experts, um, doctors perhaps, because they've seen it all. But who cares about their preferences? <laughs> uh, well, they care about their own preferences, but why should the rest of us have a system based on their preferences? Because we are interested only in the population average. You don't have to ask 10 questions of one person. Mm -hmm. You can ask only three questions of a, a person. We'll come to that in a minute. Person. And generally, people have asked a lot of questions. <laughs> um, graphically, if it helps, and again, it may help some people, not others. Along here, we're measuring time. Up here, we're measuring um, the score. We're attaching to the health state. So the two alternatives might be alternative one. It's some level of ill health. Uh, 10 years, or uh, full health for a shorter period. And as I say, the process is to try and find that X, move the X about until the individual is indifferent between the two options. Um, or same graph, essentially we're in quality terms, the qualities that health state A produce are um, W times 10, that's how many qualities being in health state A would produce. And being in full health is going to produce um, 1 times x. 1 because we give a 1 to full health. x because that's the period of full health. 
plus 0 times 10 minus x, uh, 0 because we assume death scores as 0. Rearrange these and you get w is x over 10. And so that's where the number comes from. The intuition is this. If you regard the health state as very bad, you'll be willing to give up more years of life. If you think the health state is not so bad, you might only give up, be willing to give up a few months. And so that's going to affect the X, and it's going to therefore affect the score W.